While I do love running in snow, and while I don't mind doing workouts on a treadmill, there's nothing quite like getting outside in shorts and singlet weather for a really good sweat. So it's time to hop on a plane and fly south. This is a runner's weekend in Miami, Florida. Alright guys, we have made it into Miami, just checked in at the hotel, met up with some of the other people that I'm going to be here with for the weekend. It's going to be a Hoka weekend because it's the Hoka Miami Marathon and Half Marathon. And I'm going to get a chance to check out some of the new offerings, things that I've been looking forward to for a long time, very excited about. So it should be a lot of fun. But first things first, of all the things that I've packed and as many times as I've traveled, I can't believe that today I forgot an iPhone charger. So let's go pick one of those. All right, got the iPhone charging cable picked up. Got a battery in the pack so the phone's charging out. I'm gonna need it later for the Take the Bridge event. And uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little bit of filming because I got some shoes to film. And then I'm gonna head back and get ready for the next event. All right guys, doing a quick warm up jog from the hotel down over to the Take the Bridge location. Somehow I got in charge of navigation. It's never a good thing. So we have two checkpoints. One is on, I might butcher this, Toledo Island um, on the Venetian Causeway. It's the second big island. And you're going to go far north, and then there's like a little walkway in between houses that'll take you all the way to the water, and it's right there. Okay? So that's our first one. The second one. <laughs> is on the Sunset Island. One, technically, I believe that technically those islands are like private, closed off, there's a gate there or like a guard there. We talked to them already, we have permission to go. Take the Bridge is an unsanctioned road race. You get a number of checkpoints you have to reach in order, but there's no set route. You don't know the checkpoints until you get to the race, and the races are always at night. Tommy Runs and I decided to team up together, and I was in charge of lighting while he was in charge of navigation. Miami is a city of nightlife, and it was exhilarating to race through unfamiliar streets in the dark. We hit the two checkpoints and headed for the finish at Bodega Taqueria. This taco truck inspired spot had great food and a secret back room with fine drinks and deep cuts. This was a fantastic intro into the Miami running scene. It is a windy Saturday morning here. I'm running because I'm late. Hi. I was supposed to be meeting up Kapuzi Run Club, Tommy Runs, over a couple blocks north. But I got almost all the way here and realized I forgot my memory card. So I have to go back and get it. Now I'm running late, but we'll be there soon. 
Good. Thanks everybody for uh, coming out today. Uh, I know it's a little bit windy, but I think we're gonna have a great day running along the beach. Uh, the route's gonna be pretty simple, hopefully. I haven't run it before, so I can't guarantee it. Uh, but we're just gonna go up that way for a mile and a half. I think it'll convert from like this paved surface to an actual boardwalk at some point. I think we can still go through there. Maybe some locals can verify yeah, or not. Like okay, but we can still go up that way. Okay, cool. And then a mile and a half, we'll turn around and, and, and finish back here. And if we want to do some selfies or just hang out, uh, I'll be here. So um, Tommy will lead the faster runners or anyone that wants to shake out a little faster. I'm pretty spent from yesterday. So I'm going to be uh, hanging back and just keeping it really relaxed. So anyone that wants to go a little bit more chill can hang back with me. But hopefully we'll have a great run out there today, guys. Right? Cool. Thanks for coming out today. tu nido, paloma linda, anda y prueba tu volar. No tengas miedo, mi palomita, que nada te va a pasar. Anda y prueba tus alas bonitas, sin que el temor te limite. Vuela, paloma, bien alto, mi vida, no dudes que siempre amanece. Ya amanecerá Paloma linda Paloma, paloma linda Paloma, paloma linda I just finished with the shakeout run Ooh, My legs needed a nice and easy run along the beach because they are feeling very tight from the races last night Now, Tommy's heading with his mom and his grandmother we're both all going to the same place, but I'm going to try to get, pack in some extra miles on the day. It's about a mile and change from here. I'm going to head down to the Run Girl event at 6th in Washington. Run Girl is a group that Hoka has been working with for a little while, but I only became familiar with them late last year when I had the chance to host a panel over the New York City Marathon weekend that included one of their founders, Dominique Burton. When she heard that Tommy and I were going to be in town, she invited us over to the Run Girl event, and they had Run Girl swag, the hotel created a signature drink for them, and Hoka had Bondi's and Kiwana's to demo. They also had really tasty food, which I had to restrain myself from eating too much of. After all, this event was not intended for me, so I tried to be a very polite guest. Tommy's mom and grandmother also came to the event. And personally, as a father to two daughters, I always love it when I can see the caring and nurturing side of my guy friends. All right, that was a super fun event. Now, this way, I'm gonna head back. It's time for lunch. So the thing about eating in Miami is that the real spots all look like little storefronts. But if you know what to ask for, you get taken down to the back where the actual restaurant is many times bigger and much more interesting. We had reservations for our large group and we got sat at a booth. And because it's Miami, even though it was brunch time, there was a DJ. For breakfast, I had the huevos rancheros. It was good, but I really could have used a double portion. Food in Miami is delicious, but it's a bit on the petite side. After lunch, Tommy Runs and I headed over to the expo to pick up our bibs. 
The Miami Marathon and Half Marathon draws about 18,000 runners, so this is no small race. And yet, it still has the efficiency of a smaller marathon. So Tommy and I were able to get our bibs very quickly. Neither of us were in the corrals that we wanted to be in for the race, but even though the expo was efficient, it was still in Miami, so there was just too much energy and too much noise for me. We stopped by a couple of booths to say hi to some friends, and then we got out of there pretty quick. All right, guys, we're back in the hotel room. Just got showered up. Getting through the expo was relatively quick, but it was exhausting. It was just so loud in there. <sighs> Feeling very tired. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get in all the miles that I wanted to today, because now I'm gonna head over with Tommy. We're gonna check out, there's a bandit pop-up over by the Museum of Graffiti. And that just sounds like a really fun combination of words. So let's go check it out. The bandit pop up. What'd you think, Tommy? I thought it was pretty cool. I thought well, it was dope. It was a good spot. It's Very good artistic spot. type of setup. I liked it. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah. And um, I saw my Sherpa. I got that Sherpa. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. There you go. Nice. All right. Steve Finley told us there's some good art over this way. So we're going to go check that out, see if we can find it. Crazy. I could have spent literal days in that part of Miami with all of the street art. We didn't even actually set foot in the Graffiti Museum. So everything we saw was either with Bandit in the Graffiti Museum gallery space, or it was just out on the street. But our schedule was tight and we had to get back for an early dinner because the Miami Marathon and Half Marathon has a very early 6 a.m. starting gun. Dinner was at an Italian restaurant, which is always a good choice for runners on the evening before a race. And in true Miami fashion, we got ourselves a reservation and then headed back to the secret part of the restaurant where we were able to sit outside on a lovely patio. I had cacio e pepe, one of my favorite things to eat. And here, it was very good. After dinner, but before I went to bed, I laid out all my gear for the race and put together my flat lay. In Miami on a Sunday race day morning. I am trying to get some extra miles in for the day. So I need to have a long run and I am signed up for the half marathon. So the plan for today is to run over to the race. And most people are taking the shuttle from this expo center to get to the start line. But I'm gonna jog over, add a little four and a half mile warm up to my half marathon mileage for the day. That should give me a nice number of miles for the weekend.
Because of the heat, Miami starts at 6 a.m. But because it's still January, 6 a.m. is really dark. I started out in Corral D and decided I would run easy with that 145 pace group for the first 5K. We had a strong headwind, but it was a good group that tucked in behind the pace leaders. Just past the 5K mark. Left the 145 pace group. Start putting it to harder a miles. See how long we can hold it. It's hot already. Just past the 10K mark. Whew. Getting brighter out, but it's also really hot. Really, really hot. After the finish, I stuck around for a minute to cheer on the runners behind me, and then I needed to cool off. The heat really got to me on this one, and it definitely was a struggle to keep pushing the effort. But overall, this is a really fun course with not too much elevation change. The energy from the other racers was great, and it makes up for the fact that there wasn't all that much crowd support along the way. This is a race that I'd love to come back and do again with a bunch of friends who are running at about the same pace, because this race is a party. After I finally started to cool off, I walked through the rest of the finisher's shoot. There's plenty to eat and drink at this race afterwards, but the heat really unsettled my stomach. So I skipped the food and found Tommy and his mom, who was pretty much impossible to miss. And we eventually also found Kevin who was the only one among us who managed a PR on this day. Together, we headed back to the hotel to shower, check out, and then grab one last meal together before we all split up. This was my second time visiting Miami, the first time occurring about three decades ago. But I had so much fun here, and I know I was only able to scratch the surface of what this city has to offer. Hopefully, the next visit will be very, very soon. Yo, what's going on?